my Korean husband. Hey guys! So besides from meeting guys online, a lot of girls are meeting guys that are coming to their countries for like working holiday mm. or student visas and that type of thing. And you also have to be aware of uh, that sort of risk as well, that they're not in Korea, so Korea's uh, society rules are not affecting them in the same way, so they might behave in a different way to how they would in Korea. Now when we met and we got engaged very quickly, everything was fine, but I'd actually dated Korean guys before you because I had a lot of Korean friends and they were guys that just up and left, right? Mm. So just because that we got engaged very quickly and we did it the very Korean way doesn't mean that every guy is going to be like no, that. No, not really. Yeah, especially if they're in another country and they're not feeling the pressure um, to behave in the way that Korean culture dictates. So people have to understand uh, the stigma that single mothers have in Korea, right? Yes. It's, it's really unfortunate and it's very slowly changing, but it is something that you need to be aware of if you are dating a Korean guy, um, because unfortunately there's been a lot more situations where girls have got pregnant to a Korean guy and he has gone. And even though you you often say these guys are sereggy, they're trash, that yeah. type of thing, if you were younger in this situation, you might have a very difficult situation as well. So there's sort of two sides to the story. There's the horrible reality of guys just leaving these pregnant girls. And then there's the other reality of a very conservative, strict society that they have to go join. And it's almost impossible for a Korean guy to come back to Korea and be like, this is the foreign girl that I got pregnant in another country. And she's already had the baby or something like that. Um, she's a single mother. That is such a difficult thing, isn't it? It is. Actually, it's a really difficult thing. Mm. We saw some case that, yeah, like... We're seeing a lot more cases of this because, yeah. like, me and some of my friends have blogs as well, blogging about Korean culture and Korea, and we're getting this increase of emails with this type of situation. Yeah. So it is something to be aware of and be responsible for your own fertility and uh, use protection and be very careful in these situations because in Australia, you get pregnant to a guy, you can just keep dating normally and get married later. It's really not that big of a deal, but in Korea, it's not going to be like that. Yeah, and then if you guys are not getting married, mm. they will not support you financially mm, or yeah. something. That's really, un really unfortunate, but that's how it is. So unfortunately, there's a lot of women that are finding themselves cut off from Korean culture with a child that's half Korean, and they don't have a way to sort of um, give their child you know, what their heritage is. So arranged marriages still are a thing in Korea, especially among the wealthy, mm. right? But even for sort of like normal people, you can have some sort of arranged marriage, right? Where you date to, with the intention of getting married. There are so many matching agencies mm. that you, if you put some money and you mm. become a member yeah they just introduce someone who might you like yeah so you can see just meet them because they you must have same you want to um, get married purpose. both of you yeah. want to get married they, they want to get married so yeah. just you if you meet yeah. and if you guys like each other yeah marry yeah yeah that kind of situation mm. or if you know someone friends or friends, friends. Or your parents' friend or yep. your neighbors. You meet with the intention of like maybe we'll get married. Yeah. yeah. Usually guys in their their wealthy situation they have more chance. Yeah, there's a lot lot more girls that yes. are wanting to marry. Up. Of course. Yeah. Okay, a little bit of a icky topic now is prostitution in Korea. It's everywhere, it's very uh, I don't know, normal in Korea. Like it's just sort of everywhere in Korea, even though people turn blind eye to it. So if you're marrying a Korean guy, you need to know exactly where he stands on prostitution because for a lot of Korean guys, that can be normal to go to a prostitute and a lot of Korean wives just accept that as uh, you know, just part of a marriage. That they, they actually prefer their husband to go to a prostitute than their husband to have an affair. So you need to be very clear about this before you get married. Don't wait till later and then find out the situation like this. Find out what his morals are and what his values are and um, how this plays into your marriage. So for example, 
you know, we don't like prostitution, you don't go to prostitutes, I don't go to prostitutes, because there's prostitutes for women as well. Yeah, there is. <laughs> there is. There's lots yeah. of young, attractive guys out there catering to women as well. So in our relationship, that's not okay, but you need to make that very clear. Communication is so, so important. They are not going often, but mm. sometimes they go because it's part of their business. Yeah, it's when, a pressure when, in the yes, business. When, when you meet someone from mm. another company, mm. you need to do something for them to make them feel happy. Mm. So what they do is usually take, take them, them to, to the business some, meeting, yeah, business, sexy girls place. Yes, and then drink together yeah. and go happy ending or something. Mm. But it's part of the business. Yeah, yeah. So you need to be very clear about this and like what type of job your husband has and yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that are quite icky to talk about, but it's something you have to talk about. So once you get married, what does everybody expect of you? Have a baby! Like right away! Like Triplets! Honey, honeymoon baby, do it now! Yes. So we, we are very different because we've been married for like three years or so and we haven't popped out a baby because of work and because we're an international couple and it's just not right for us yet. It'll be right for us soon, hopefully. But yeah, so you're going to get those questions all the time, so be aware of that. Time. You, you remember sometimes they touch your oh, belly? Oh, they come up and touch your belly. If I'm just a little bit bloated, I just ate a big meal, oh, the aunts will come, and you have a baby there. No, I just ate a lot. This baby, food baby. <laughs> it's a food baby. But also, you don't just marry into one family. You marry into this big extended family, and this might be way more important than your own culture. Like in Australia, you see your relatives you know, sometimes and that type of thing, but you don't feel sort of connected. But in Korea, it's this big connected web of all these family members and the name the name terms are very difficult so yeah I don't even know <laughs> how to say <laughs> some, some how to say yeah. this person or this person so if you are in an international relationship it can be this coming together of two cultures but some people prefer just to be sort of all in one culture like it really depends on the individual relationship doesn't it? yeah it does yeah like what what works for your relationship so I hope that sort of shed some light on how dating and marrying a Korean will be different from your own culture maybe it'll be a bit similar to your culture um, there's a lot of Asian cultures that have some similarities yes. but if you're from a Western culture like me you'll find that there are these vast differences that can be very very extreme okay thank you for watching our video and you can subscribe to our youtube channel if you haven't already we've got comics on the blog and online webtoon and the social media and everything like that and we'll see you later bye bye bye, -bye.